Valve has released a very pretty booklet, and you know what? That is true. Uh, to it is int- pretty. To introduce the company and Steam to new markets, namely Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. And it doesn't cost $250 or whatever Apple's book cost. You, they just send you a PDF and you can print it out for yourself. Yeah. The Steam Deck will be released in these markets through Japanese company Komodo later this year. The booklet is available in English, Japanese, Korean, and traditional Chinese. Physical booklets will be available at the Tokyo Game Show next month. Um, and there's a bunch of things in the booklet, including... I'm just scrolling through it right now. Including you? What... Yeah, I made it in. What I made it mean? into the booklet. Where? Uh, hold on, I gotta, I gotta find it. This was like, honestly, such a, uh, you know, I made it, Dad. Moment, right? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to, I'm G- trying to find Gabe, the spot where Gabe it is. Senpai recognized me. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, here, or someone else did. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, but yeah, here it is. There it is. Okay, 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 okay. The Steam Deck's physical design was built with comfort in mind. The rounded grips make it comfortable to hold for long gaming sessions. We tested many different grips. The hardware was also designed to be repaired, replaced, or upgraded. The PC community is full of people who love to tinker and upgrade their machines. So we've made it easy to open the back cover with standard tools. Parts are clearly marked, and it's possible, for an experienced customer, to replace many of the main components. We've already seen the Steam Deck community successfully replacing the... Oh, they called it a hard drive. Oh, no. Attaching an external GPU. Uh, Shout out UFD, and I think there was someone else who did that, but don't quote me on that um, as well. 3D printing stands, cases and attachments. I know Dbrand's been working on attachments and even attaching a PC grade heatsink to the back of the device. For fun, we definitely don't recommend this one. <laughs> Come on! Get owned. Come on, Get Mel! owned. It's faster, runs cooler. Get owned. And in my humble opinion, looks freaking <laughs> awesome. Looks so good. Alex outdid himself with the design on that one. Hilarious. And I helped. Hilarious. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> All of these cool things and this other cool thing that you shouldn't do. <laughs> yeah. But it was awesome. Um, yeah. And the booklet was about more than just Steam Deck. It's um, It was a, a pretty cool window into you know Valve's processes, their way of thinking, Um they see their company as being based on principles of openness and access that define the open PC community. Uh, I mean, I think that they have done a pretty good job of walking the walk over the last little bit, particularly with respect to Steam Deck. I don't know that it was always that way with their hardware products, but it's definitely definitely moving in the right direction. Uh, overall, it's been good guy Valve for the better part of at least the last couple of years. Uh, They provided a brief summary on how Steam was created to automate game updates, which really did solve a very real problem and was a huge, huge motivating factor for me to essentially completely stop pirating games. I don't I don't own or play a single pirated uh, game anymore. It's like. Oh, no, I shouldn't say that because um, like, okay, technically, even if you own a cartridge, downloading a ROM is pirating the game. So. Okay, no, no. But PC games, I don't think I own a single pirated game. Everything's just in my Steam or Uplay yeah, or whatever so. library because, man, things being auto-updated absolutely solved a major, major pain point, especially with respect to multiplayer, which was really taking off at that time. Man, it was it was real weird back in the day when you had to get updates, not even from like the game publisher's own website. You had to get them from like GameFAQs or like whatever. What was the name of that? It had like military... It, major Geeks? Major Geeks. You had to get updates from Major Geeks back in the exist. day and stuff. Like that was that was a weird time. I remember if you installed Call of Duty Modern Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare back in the day, and you went to the server list. Yeah, it looks the same. That's awesome. <laughs> I actually love that. Um, if you went to the server list on Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare, if you just installed it and went there, there was no servers. Yep, it just you had to go to broken. Major Geeks and download two updates, and yep. then it would work. Like how people even figured that out. Okay, you would say like, oh, the YouTube videos and stuff. This was. You know, internet was in a different time, okay? Yeah, I mean, to be clear, I do have some issues with automatic updates. Um, people are talking in the in the float plane chat about Shouldn't removing be features. Shouldn't be forced. Uh, yes, and uh, Beat Saber in particular is super annoying because every time they 
release a new like map pack, it breaks all my mods for like a week. And like shout out the Beat Saber modding community. You guys are amazing. The fact that you're able to turn around these updates so quickly for no pay at all. Yeah. Like just the, the passion in that community is incredible. There is often ways. But as a gamer, contribute. it like still blows, right? Yeah. You know, you don't want to just not be able to play your custom songs. I, that rarely happens anymore, actually. It hasn't happened in a long time. That's something I've been trying to do. But like leaderboards and stuff. As my like, I've grown up and my financial situation has improved is like open source software that I use that is free, that has like contribution links. I've tried to recognize, sometimes you don't really think about it. Oh, but yeah. I've tried to recognize like, yep, oh, that's fair. I use this. I'm going to go contribute to the creator and, and more than just a coffee. And I've, I've been trying to do that more consciously over time. But, yeah. I just would like to issue a correction. I meant privateered games. Oh, yes. Yes, very good. Uh, so they shout out their hires from the mod community, namely the devs of Day of Defeat, Counter-Strike, Dota 2, Team Fortress, and Portal. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that they, like, basically bought their best game yeah. is like... <laughs> <laughs> Like, what has Valve actually developed? Like, like internally? Yeah, Portal came from a group of students. Counter-Strike was purchased, I believe. Is that the one you're talking about? I think it was a mod, right? Portal, I was counting as their best game, but... Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's open for debate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, don't don't come at me, please. Yeah, I think, I th if I were... This is old memory, but I think Counter-Strike was like a mod for Half-Life that they bought or something. Or brought in or did something yeah, with. Yeah. And then Portal was a group of students that they ended up hiring team on. Team Fortress was also a Half Life mod that they like brought the team on board for, if I recall correctly. Yeah, cool. So amazing. Uh so Dota two was clearly a Warcraft three mod initially. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> little bit. I didn't, I didn't realize how many of these things came externally. Like how many games <laughs> Valve has actually made. Well, it made them, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um they have pretty photos of all the prototypes. Uh, that was actually a very cool page. That was fun to see. I love that kind of stuff. Super into that. Yeah, like why hide it? It's so cool. They have plans for shipping a SteamOS general installer for consumers and other hardware very manufacturers cool. soon. That's super cool. Very cool. Happy like, about that. Okay, let's say I prefer the hardware of an Ioneo device or something like that. Why don't I just dual boot? That'd be sweet. Ah! That'd be super cool. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, the Steam Deck interface will soon be available on PCs plugged into TVs and in VR, which is super cool because they've done a lot of really great work on it since launch. And the most important note, Steam Deck represents the first in a new category of Steam handheld gaming PCs. In the future, Valve will follow up this product with improvements and iterations to hardware and software, bringing new versions of Steam Deck to market. So I believe this is the first time that they've actually committed to new Steam Decks, although it was fairly obvious based on the colossal success of this there product. There was a couple things that Gaben said that would be like pretty hard to interpret in any way that isn't we're making another one, but I don't think he ever specifically said it. I could be wrong about that, but yeah. 